hello everyone and welcome back to my channel so my name is katie and today i'm going to be doing my june wrap up so <laughs> june is funny because i didn't read for like the first 20 days or whatever 19 18 i can't remember when my last exam was i think it was the 18th so i didn't read at all really for like the first 18 days which is so weird for me because i usually do a lot of reading but i just did not have the energy <laughs> i spent it watching the tank like all my um time when I wasn't revising I was watching the Tangled series which I love so much um anyway uh but yeah then once the holiday started I started reading a lot so I did actually read quite a few books <laughs> um and I was sort of finishing bits and bobs that I had started but didn't really get that far through so yeah I ended up reading about 15 books which I think is very impressive <laughs> for like two weeks. I'm just gonna be talking about them today. So I hope you enjoy. And I usually try and leave timestamps for my wrap ups in the description. So if you're just interested in a certain book, then you can go to those. So yes. So the first book I read was Witch Shadow by Susan Dennard. And I read this as an arc, but I believe it's out now. Um, and this is the fourth book in the Witchland series. And I enjoyed this installment, but I don't think it was my favourite really in the Witchlands books. My favourite is definitely Blood Witch. But, and I feel like this one just felt a little bit kind of directionless. I don't know. Um, or just very much like a kind of, it felt like a bridgy book. So it kind of was needed, but it didn't really have a lot of its own kind of, plot I guess it did have its own plot but it just felt like it I don't really know maybe it's because I just hadn't read the other books recently but just something about it felt a little bit sort of lost <laughs> I don't know but I still really like the characters I really like Safi and Assault who are this kind of pair of they're like thread sisters so they're not actual sisters but like really close friends um and Safi is a truth witch so she can like sense when people are lying um and Isol is a thread witch so she can see the like threads of people so like their kind of emotions um, and this book which I do is very much Isolt's book and I feel like it's a really good book for Isolt and she sort of learns about kind of <laughs> the nature of power and how power doesn't necessarily make someone evil it's more about how the person chooses to use their power um, which I think is a really cool like thing to explore Um, I did feel like the relationships in this book there wasn't a lot of um, like the there's a, the main ship I feel like of the series Isol and Aiden there's not a lot of their moments really there is a one or two which like mm, crumbs but um yeah it's that's not a big focus of this book I wouldn't say um but I did really like there was another so Viva Viv, Vivia Vivia um and Empress Vanus I liked exploring their dynamic a bit in this more like these two really powerful women the kind of sort of competing but also trying to work together I just felt like that was very interesting um and there's another character called Leopold who is like this kind of almost a bit of a trickster type character and he's like this charming prince but he has a lot of secrets and I like learning more about him in this book I feel like it was really interesting so I feel like if you like the series then this one is definitely a really good like um installment in the series I don't think you'll be that disappointed but I don't think it's the best book in the series if that makes sense um yeah so that's that one and then next we have a marvelous light um which i gave 4.5 stars to and i really enjoyed this one it's like a regency type romance um it was kind of like bridgerton slash the midnight bargain vibes which i love um both well bridgerton's not but well it is a book actually but i haven't read the book but i love the show um it's just that kind of trashy good stuff um and yeah i really like the midnight bargain and there's a few other regency romances that i've read like what's the one called the lady's guide to celestial mechanics i've read that one i really like that one that's sapphic as well um so this one's a killian and um yeah i just really enjoyed it i like the, the character dynamics between the like main couple because it is a bit of i would say it's like a fantasy romance well yeah um it's kind of heavy on the romance but the main dynamic is like grumpy sunshine and i love it and like oh um and what's that yeah like genius himbo <laughs> energy um so we're basically from this current character called robin who he kind of gets assigned like a job as the replacement for this um guy called reggie and reggie um has gone missing so he is like the replacement but he ends up sort of getting pulled into Reggie's mess <laughs> so he um is kind of hunted down so I can't quite remember the position but he's basically working as the in the government um as like 
an investigator for like weird weird shit <laughs> um so stuff that doesn't quite make sense but he has robin at the start of the book has no idea about this world of magic um, I feel like I'm being scattered with my explanation of this book. So anyway, so Robin ends up being hunted down by what they think is the people who have done something to Reggie. And he gets put this like curse on him. Reggie was hiding something and they're after something and they think Robin knows where it is. So they curse him um, to try and like make him bend their will or whatever. Um, so yeah, so Robin ends up cursed and then he has to team up with this other guy called Edwin who is, and Edwin is like the liaison between the like normal government and the like magical world. So Edwin is like part of the magical world but he doesn't have a lot of magic himself. So I think that's another interesting thing that's looked at in this book is the kind of whole like hierarchy of power. Like in the magical world it seems it's like the more power you have the better you are type thing. Um, so yes, that's interesting. And it's very sort of, a lot of the book takes place. So a kind of Edwin and Robin team up and they end up going to like Edwin's family's manor house to try and like look into things and like break this curse. But so a lot of the book is set in this like manor house and it's very sort of Gatsby-esque with like this rich family and there's, they're like rich in magic as well. And there's so, and they're like socialites of the time. So it's Edwin and all the rest of his family. So it's like Sister Belle and there's some other characters as well. And they're very sort of like, like what you imagine like a Gatsby party type thing to be. So that's kind of the whole like vibe, like of that type thing. And then at the same time, there's all this magical stuff going on. And I just really enjoyed it. I thought it was really good. I like the storyline with the whole like kiss and trying to break it and the whole like, there's these um they're like hunting down these different kind of magical artifact type things um yeah i liked towards the end there's sort of an introduction of a more type like nature plant type magic which i really liked um so yeah i would highly recommend this one i think it comes out in about november so definitely get it on your want to read tbr pre-order list <laughs> um i would highly recommend then after that I read Nolan by Michael J. Sullivan and I gave this one four stars and this is the first book in the Rise and Fall trilogy I think that's what the trilogy is called um, and this is basically set between so I don't, if you're familiar with Michael J. Sullivan's books basically there's or if you're not familiar I guess there's the, the his first series that he published I can't I, it's like the Raira Revelations I think it's called and um, the first one is called Theft of Swords. Um, and this one follow that, that follows like this duo, um, Royce and Hadrian, who are the ultimate Grumpy Sunshine duo, by the way. Which, if you like that, then like, you have to read Theft of Swords. Um, and they're like this pair of criminals. And basically they get framed for like um, killing the king and then it just all goes off from there. But it's a really good series. But anyway, and then there's also Legends of the First Empire, which is set in the same world, but takes place about 3000 years before like the Royce and Hadrian series. And then this one, Nolan, is set in the middle of those. <laughs> so it's set about a thousand years after Legends. Um, and I would say you could easily read Nolan without having read the Royce and Hadrian books. But I feel like you would struggle if you hadn't read Legends of the First Empire. Because the it's very connected to Legends. I feel like it's almost a direct like continuation. It's kind of following the children of some of the characters from Legends and I feel like a lot of the events are stuff that's sort of it's almost like wrapping up how Legends like left off in a way um and but I I really enjoyed the story um I like so we're following mainly two characters Nolan who's the titular character and he's the son of N Nephron and Persephone um and so they're like the emperor and empress basically and yeah what is he been doing <laughs> i've forgotten um so basically he's been sent like the edges fringes of the war and he thinks he's been sent by his father to basically die um but i mean events uncover that maybe that's not quite as true as he thinks as the book progresses but that's initially what he thinks he is so he's anyway teams up with these other like fighter men <laughs> I've lost all my words today. Um, so that's kind of how his story starts. And I'm also following Sephirin, who's the daughter of Moya and Tek Tekshkin? Tekkin? I can't remember his name. But um, from the Legend series as well. Um, and Sephirin's a great character. She's probably my favourite character in the series. Um, and, she, and her storyline as well is great. So basically her son, Nerga, who is like a baby, gets kidnapped. And um, she is like being 
not controlled, but she's being like talked to by this mysterious voice in her head who's like making her try and steal this um, artifact from the um, Empress Palace to in order to get her son back. And so she teams up with like this weird, I don't even know how he comes into the story, but this monk character and also this like thief called Errol. And I love the three of them, their dynamic and the whole storyline of them trying to pull off this heist <laughs> um, is quite funny. And also the whole theme of motherhood I thought was really good in this book. And there's another character as well, I can't remember her name. It begins with an A. She's sort of a bit mentally um, lost. And a bit throughout the book, we sort of see why she's the way she is and the way it kind of comes around full circle. I really like that about her storyline. So anyway, and, and how it ties in with Seferin's storyline as well. Um, so yeah, I like, I really liked both, like, I really liked Seferin and I quite like Neil. Like, he grew on me throughout the book. But yeah, and the way that their storylines kind of come together and how everything at the end, I thought the ending was so good. Yeah, I just really like Michael J. Sullivan's writing. It's really easy to read and I feel like he tells a really good story. Um, I was a bit sad. It was funny because all his other books I've read on audio and it was so funny reading it physically because all these like words <laughs> were completely not the way I thought they'd been spelt. Um, but yeah, so anyway, that's that one. Um, and then I read Trailer Park Trickster, which is the sequel to White Trash Warlock, and I gave Trailer Park Trickster 3.5 stars. So I actually really enjoyed White Trash Warlock. I, I requested it just because of its name um, last year, the first one, because um, I thought, I guess White Trash is like the American version of a chav, and I just thought a chavvy story is going to be so funny. Um, but I actually really enjoyed it, um, and I thought this one was good. I don't I didn't like it quite as much as the first one. I feel like it's definitely like sequel energy and it just it felt like a very short story and I feel like I would have wanted it to be a bit longer but yeah so it's it's a bit of a like murdery mystery type thing um so Adam the main character his kind of relative well they're not his relatives I can't remember if they are his relatives or they're not his relatives but anyway the sort of um one of the women who helped raised him like mysteriously dies and then the rest of her kind of family start dying and they're trying to like figure out what's going on um so that was kind of the main plot of the book so it's a bit like a yeah I guess it's a bit like a murder mystery um and I enjoyed it and I like the um there's more like there's a kind of these like elves are they elves or are they fey anyway they're they, we explore a bit more of their world as well which is kind of cool I like that I feel like if you liked White Trash Warlock you would like this book and they're just really fun they're like they're basically what I wanted Dresden Files to be <laughs> but I, I hated Dresden Files but these ones they're just quite light-hearted and fun but they do have some like serious topics especially the first one I feel like the first one I liked more because of the like there's a very complex relationship between Ab Adam and his brother but then in the sequel it's just they've suddenly got this like great relationship so <laughs> I don't know I feel like we just didn't really have time to explore that that well so yeah that's my thoughts on that one. And after I read the Atlas 6, which I gave four stars to, and I enjoyed this one. This one has so much hype on Twitter. Um, which but I really like the characters in this one. Um I feel like it was bordering on a little bit too pretentious for me. Um, but I did really enjoy it. Um the yeah, I really like um Nico and Livy their like dynamic was so great and that is they're kind of like the almost platonic soulmates type vibes which I love um and like but they have a lot they're almost like enemies but well not enemies rivals I think like academic rivals but you can tell they like can't live without each other and it's so cute but I didn't really ship them like romantically um I actually the yeah anyway it's all a bit like <laughs> the kind of relationships are all a bit um everyone sort of flirting with everyone else type thing so basically these six people are chosen to be like um a, i don't think apprentice is the right word but to like join this mysterious society for the like library of alexandria um and so they're like in training to kind of have memberships this library thing it's like a secret society basically and um but they're told that um only five of them will like make it through so one of them has to go so they're having to decide like who to get rid of um and then maybe it's like get rid of in a slightly more sinister way <laughs> it turns out 
But yeah, it's, it's, I'd say it's mainly like focused on the characters, like their backstories and how they've come to be sort of where they are is quite interesting. And I did really like, yeah, the characters. Like I like Nico and Libby's dynamic. And I also really like Nico and Gideon's dynamic. So uh, my thing keeps falling out. Gideon is, Gideon's not one of the six, but he is like Nico's roommate type thing. Um, And he, and Gideon's like half mermaid, half, something else <laughs> i don't know he's not human anyway but i like and it, like nico's like his protectiveness of gideon oh it's so cute but um so i really like them and parisa oh love her we love an unhinged female character um and i actually really liked her story and the whole kind of not villainizing women who are like very confident in their sexuality i think was a cool like thing to explore um i like tristan he's like a I don't even know how to describe him. Uh, yeah, I think he's got like a famous criminal father, I think, but he's trying to like claw his way up in society. Um, but he's also quite a bit of a cinema role, really. And then Callum, who's like a complete sociopath. <laughs> but I quite, he was a very interesting character to read about, actually. And I feel like especially the characters with Tristan and Callum were very like philosophical. Um, and then I think it's kind of, there's almost like two sets of characters going on. There's like Nico, Libby and Renya. And, and they, they, those three have kind of, they're almost living in their own little bubble. And then like the whole Parisa, Callum and Tristan storyline is suddenly a lot more like murderous. And they're all like ruthless and out to get each other. And, and it just feels a bit like the, there's almost two stories going on here. But um, yeah, I did really like it and I'm very interested to read the next book um in the series I liked how as well a lot of things sort of tied in that maybe you thought might not be relevant but they sort of became relevant like later on or characters sort of come back into play um yeah so that's that one after that I read how to find a princess <laughs> sorry I'm having a coughing fit by Alyssa Cole um, and this is a sapphic romance and this is an Anastasia type retelling. I didn't quite get 100% Anastasia vibes, but I did really enjoy it. <coughs> so the main character, oh, what's her name? I've forgotten her name. Makeda, I think it's Makeda. Um, and she is basically um, kind of living her life. Uh, where she works in like the um, supermarket grocery store if you're American um and she is very much like a people pleaser I think she lives with a grandma and her mother she has a weird relationship with her mother because her mother like became obsessed with the thinking they were like royalty and and but then she ended up leaving and anyway so but one day she is visited by this character called Bezenaria um and Bezenaria thinks that Makeda is like the long lost heir to the, is it Iberian? I, I can't quite remember the name of this country, but anyway, it's a country where they have like royalty. Um, and she wants to take her to like claim that she is the royal. So I guess that's kind of like the Anastasia thing. Eventually Makeda is like convinced she'll come along, but she only wants to do it for the money because she's ended up in like debt and, and she doesn't really think she's the princess. Um, so yeah, so it's, it's, it's more about their relationship because they don't really get to like Iberia until the, right at the end of the book. But um, I did actually quite like at the end, the sort of, it's not really a twist, but how things ended up, I quite liked. Um, the, so yeah, so it's more about their relationship and they spend quite a lot of time on a boat, um, which I guess in Anastasia they do go on a boat for a bit, so <laughs> yeah. Um, but I enjoyed it. I thought it was quite a sweet romance. I didn't feel like it was any favourite romance, really. But it was still enjoyable to read. Um, and I like the characters. And I like their dynamic. But I did feel like some of the like royalty stuff was a little bit... I don't know. It, it was like a contemporary, but then there was all this like royal stuff. And it just felt a little bit like... Not jarring, but it was a little bit strange. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I enjoyed it. Um, and would definitely recommend if you're looking for more sapphic romances. Next we have The First Sister by Lyndon A. Lewis and this one I really enjoyed as well. I gave it four stars. I gave it four stars. Yeah, four stars. Um, although I feel like having, I also read the arc of the sequel 
I feel like having read that, I feel like this one may be 3.75 stars and then the sequel, four stars. Um, but so we're following this character <coughs> called the First Sister who doesn't really have a name and she like was on this ship as the First Sister and basically the sisters, they are like, they sort of hear the like confessions of the soldiers. I'm sorry, my voice sounds really strange. <coughs> I need some water. They um, hear the like confessions of the soldiers and they also provide like bodily comforts. So they basically have sex with them. Or and not necessarily sex, but like, they're like, look after them. But the first sister has kind of acquired the like favor of the captain. So she has this like white band and then none of the other soldiers can like be intimate with her. That's her story. And then this, basically the captain like runs off <laughs> um, and then this new captain comes along called Saito Ren as a replacement captain and then like the main the first sister and this new captain sort of astro no that's not her name yeah um that the first sister um has to like um try and convince the new captain to like like her so she can like maintain her status as the first sister and it's all it's very kind of culty these sisters and the whole thing it's very and like brainwashy and it's very interesting um and the, but then the new captain is maybe hiding a few secrets of her own um yeah and then we're also following Leto who is on the other side so yeah so the first sister is like a Gian and they're like Mars and Earth they're like alliance and then Leto is an Ikari and Ikari is like people who like left and settled on like Mercury and Venus um, and their whole then so the the kind of they're at war like the Gians and the Ikari <laughs> so his previous partner because they have these like dual list things so it's like pairs of them so he is partner Hero and Hero was sent on a mission but Hero like deflected to the enemy so now Leto has been sent to hunt down Hero and also um kill the empress is it the empress or the mother i think she's called the mother so but she's like in charge of the Gians or in charge of the religious sect of the Gians. anyway um so yeah so that's what he's doing um but at the same time he is gets these recordings from hero like explaining things so the book it has three like pov so you have leto's pov the first sister's pov and then heroes like recording povs um let me find one so it's like the play and then that type thing so that's the three like stories that you're following <clears throat> and then leto is like discovering that maybe the akari aren't really what he thought <laughs> um and yeah so it's, it's interesting and i liked how the stories sort of tied together at the end did they tie is that this book yeah yeah they all tie together so i really like that and the twist at the end is really good um i didn't i think i sort of saw like this is really hard to explain without spoiling it so <laughs> just skip ahead like a minute if you haven't read it and don't want to be spoiled but basically the twist is an identity of a character and um, i sort of i guess that this character had a new identity but i thought they were someone else so yeah i don't know if that made any sense <laughs> so yeah i thought that they were the mother rather than the captain if that makes sense but anyway but yeah so i thought the twist was good and, and the book definitely reads almost like a thriller like it i was reading it pretty fast like i didn't want to put it down um to like find out what was happening and because it's all a bit mysterious like there's definitely something that's not quite right and you just get this sense and it compels you to keep reading and then i'll talk about the sequel because i also read an arc of the sequel which is called the second rebel um and i really like the sequel i think it explored it expanded on the world quite well and explored um the, yeah i guess it explores a lot more about sort of the revolution and so re rebellion type thing this is what, whenever i start saying this it always reminds me of the scene from final space um which just makes me think of like every ya book ever when one of the characters try book is like the rebellion is gonna take on the uprising he's gonna take on the revolution he's gonna take on the insurrection and <laughs> it's really funny but anyway um so yeah so this one so I talked about the Ikari and the Gians, who are the two like warring factions. Then there's also the Asters, 
<laughs> the best way I can describe them, they're like belters from The Expanse. So they're basically almost, they've become another race because they've been kind of living in space for so long. Uh, but the Astors are very sort of looked down on by society. Um, and but the Astors are trying to take back stuff for their own like they want to take back their own like freedom or whatever and um, so the, the the book mainly focuses on and three of the POVs I would say out of the four is focused on this Astor kind of rebellion um, and I think it was done really well I like the storyline and the exploration of the kind of lengths people are willing to go to and what sacrifices they're willing to make for like a cause I think it was really good it definitely there's the series reminds me quite a bit of Red Rising, I would say. Um, yeah, especially the Golden Sun and Morning Star type storylines. Um, so yeah, so that's the thing. And then, so yeah, so we also, we're following Leto and Hero again, and also um, Luce, who is Leto's sister. And Luce is probably actually my favorite POV in Second Rebel. We didn't get her POV in First Sister, but I really like getting her POV in this one. Um, and yeah, she's a really good character. And I also, she, her storyline has a bit of a romance in it, which I really like. Um, and yeah, and then again, we're also following the first sister from the first book. And, and her, but her storyline in this one is quite separate, really. Um, she's sort of dealing with the like religion, with like the sisters and the mother. And, and that is interesting in itself, but it's a bit separate from like the other three in a way. Um, but yeah, no, I enjoyed it. And in the end, um, there's another quite good uh, twisty type thing, which I quite enjoyed. And I also liked in the second one, um, exploring more about the synthetics. So like the setup of the world. So there's the Gians like Mars and Earth, and then the Ikari, like Mercury and Venus, and then the Asters who sort of live out in space. And then, but there's this border um, and beyond it live the synthetics who was like, AIs who are kind of sentient and they've sort of banned humanity from going past this border because otherwise they don't want humans to like explore new territory and like spread their like evil basically but I liked finding out more about the synthetics in this book as well and um, because you don't really see much of that in the first book so yeah I liked knowing more about that and yeah so actually yeah the ending the last chapter was it was really good it there's a bit of a the twist is almost it's not the same twist as the first book but the sort of nature of the twist is a little bit similar <laughs> but it still shocked me and it still got me and I thought it was really good um so yeah would definitely recommend then after I read an arc of Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber and I gave this one 3.5 stars. And so this one is set in the same world as the Caraval series. And actually, I like this one more than I like the Caraval series, although I gave it a low rating. But I think if I was to reread Caraval now, I'd probably give them a low rating. But I enjoyed this one a lot. It wasn't quite what I was expecting, because I think I was expecting it to be like a Jack's story. He's one of the characters from the Caraval series. He's like the Prince of Hearts. Um, and he's this thing called a Fate, which the Fates are like, I didn't really know what they are their fates <laughs> they have like powers they're almost like demigods i would say um and Jax is like his kiss is deadly or something um and he is he is a fairly main character in once upon a broken heart but he's not the main character so the main character following is evangeline and basically she gets like her heart broken at the start of the book by like her first love um and so she goes to Jax for a deal to I can't remember what the exact deal is. I think it's like to mess up her ex's wedding in exchange and Jax will give her like, Jax wants three of her kisses, like not to kiss him, but to kiss who he chooses. Um, so ba they basically make this deal. And then anyway, events happen and they end up in the North, which is like this kind of wintry thing. And Evangeline ends up using one of her kisses to kiss this prince, Apollo. And Apollo then becomes sort of enchanted with her. That's sort of the story. I don't know how to explain what happens from there without spoiling it. So that's kind of like the setup. And then it sort of ends up becoming a bit of like a, like a folk, like folk fairy tale with like the dangers of making wishes basically <laughs> um yeah and then things keep happening and um and Jax is a quite a prominent character and he's a bit of a trickster and um, and it's like Evangeline trying to deal with him and also Evangeline um sort of coming to terms with like love and loss and all that and I really liked it and um, 
I just feel like I wasn't fully, I don't know. I, first of all, I feel like it wasn't that long. It was quite short to read. And I always feel like shorter books, I never enjoy quite as much, unless they're like really amazing. Like I feel like a novella can be really good. But I just feel like sometimes shorter books just don't quite like hit the same. We don't have quite time to explore. Like some of the themes were really interesting, but I feel like we just didn't have quite enough time to explore them all. But otherwise I quite enjoyed it. Um, I like the sort of setting and like the vibes. It's very much like it reads like a fairy tale and like a cautionary tale almost. But I think also I was expecting it to be more of a standalone, but it's very clearly a series. And then I read Fool's Fate, which is the final book in the Tawny Man trilogy. So, um, yeah, I don't really know how to talk about this one without spoiling. Okay, so I gave this one four stars. And um, maybe like 4.25 stars because some of the moments in this one were just oh so good like every fits in the full moment was so good and the fits in the full third act breakup scene which isn't really a spoiler because that's not really what it is but I feel like if you've read it you'll know sort of what I'm talking about um was so good <laughs> I loved it um and just very emotional um I feel like the ending I'm glad that it wasn't like completely the ending for Fitz's story because I do like feel like Fitz sort of reverts back <laughs> to like age, how he was ages ago and like all this character growth just out the window <laughs> um but yeah so anyway I I like the story and I, I like the whole like mission where so they're going to like uh well, kill slash rescue. They don't really know what they're doing. <laughs> this dragon. Um, and I like that. Um, and I also liked how that story sort of wrapped up by like two thirds of the way through the book. And then the rest was sort of um, emotional drama. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I did actually quite like that structure. Because um, I do like books where the like main action happens sort of in the middle. Um, and then the rest, like, sort of Kaigen does it really well. Um, and the rest is sort of dealing with the aftermath of that. And I feel like Robin Hobb does that really well because she really makes you, like, feel for the characters. Um, yeah, and just some of the things that happened. Oh, there's a line and... Oh, fizz. <laughs> um, yeah, just some of it was so good. But then I feel like some of it was a little bit, like... Not boring, but I feel like I did find that. I don't know if this was just because I was, um, like, doing my exams and stuff. But I just feel like I wasn't so excited to, like, pick up the audiobook all the time. And just feel like some of it felt like a bit of a slog, almost. But, yeah, some parts of it were just, oh. And I love Fizz. And I love The Fool. And their dynamic and all. Oh. And when it's talking about, oh, anyway, yeah. There's a, quite a bit of suffering that goes on in the book, but it just, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't think I was very coherent for that, but I did really like it. It's an emotional ride. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a very hard book to talk about without spoiling anything, I feel like, um, but yeah. Okay, then after that I read Wild Law by Amanda Foodie, and I really enjoyed this one. It's a middle grade. Um, and it's sort of like How to Train Your Dragon slash meets Pokemon. So the main character we're following, Barkley. And actually, it's funny, I've done them in this order, but he reminds me of a little Fitz, honestly. It's like the same like grumpy type, um, reluctant hero, I would say. Um, and basically he accidentally bonds with this beast. <clears throat> and in the world they have these like keepers who are people who bond with beasts and they have like beast marks so the beasts like live in a little tattoo and then they can like summon them and um, but Barclay doesn't want to be a keeper and so he is trying to get rid of his beast mark but he basically in order to do that he has to enter this competition where he um if he wins then one of the like keepers important keepers has agreed to remove his mark for him um so but in order to win he has to like work together with his beast and there's there's the whole like bonding thing that goes on which is really cute um yeah and then Barkley maybe learns that the keepers aren't quite as bad as he thought they were um and I just love the whole story and the whole tournament thing is really fun I feel like a lot of middle grades follow that kind of structure but it's really enjoyable and I like Barkley and I like the, his um friend what's her name Viola yeah I thought it was Viola Viola um, and also the 
there's some other like the side characters like side friendships I thought was done quite well so there's some like twists like there's um a character who's kind of quite obviously evil but then he sort of has an apprentice but you don't know who that apprentice is and there's a character that you very clearly think should be but then like actually it's some other character uh, um yeah so I just thought that was done quite well I don't think I'm explaining that very well but um yeah and I actually re the ending makes me very excited for the next book and also the whole dynamic between the characters in the next book I think I'm gonna enjoy a lot but um yeah so I really like this one I feel like it's a really good start to a new middle way series um and just the whole um like I really like the whole woodland setting like the foresty magic I also thought it was really cool um, so yeah, so that's that one. I read The Maidens by Alex something, I can't say his name, I can't remember it to say it. Um, he's the same author that wrote The Silent Patient. So this book, it's kind of hard to review. I gave it three stars because I feel like it was well written and um, the like vibes were impeccable, like very dark academia type thing. And actually later in the week we went on a day trip to Durham um, and I just the whole like it was making me think of the book like with the dark academia stuff but um yeah so it's kind of a psychological thriller which i think was where <laughs> i struggled because i do not like psychological thrillers at all and i i have a general hatred of psychiatry <laughs> um so yeah i didn't really like that because there's quite a strong like psychological element to it almost um and i did think the twist was kind of a bit well, yeah, I was fine with thrillers. I don't really like, I never really like the twists that much. I don't know why. I just feel like it's sometimes because like, you get used to reading fantasy books where sometimes twists can be like change the whole like way you see the world almost like the, I don't know. But and then the twist in the thriller book always just feels so like petty. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. But um, and I did sort of see who the sort of villain was a bit earlier on because basically so we're following Marina and she uh is a psychotherapist um and she goes to Cambridge because her like sort of surrogate daughter um is there at university and one of her friends has died um or been murdered um and Marina goes to like obviously support but then she becomes like pretty obsessed with this other guy called Edward Fosser or Fosker who she thinks is doing the killings um and then more girls start dying and she becomes more and more convinced that this Edward Fosker is the murderer um so yeah and it's kind of about her trying to prove that and then in the but at the same time the girls who are dying are part of this like culty thing what well, a society called the maidens who are sort of quite into like Greek mythology um which is quite interesting. I like that side of things. Um, and like the the killings are quite real, ri ritualistic, um, which I think was interesting. But I, yeah, I don't know how I felt about this. I didn't really like all the psychology. <laughs> um, and I always just hate how like everything always stems back to like childhood issues. And yeah, I feel like it just gives me it gives me trauma from doing psychiatry but I feel like if you if you like psychology and you like psychology psychological thrillers you will really like it because I do feel like it is quite well written um, and it definitely made me want to like keep reading I was definitely like quite invested <laughs> so then I read Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid I gave this one 3.5 stars but to be honest <laughs> the first half of the book was like 2.5 stars and then the last half of the book was like 4.5 stars so I really enjoyed it once it got into like the whole party thing because the premise of the book is like these four like famous siblings host this like big party in Malibu every year and this time there's like at the end of the night the house goes up in flames and um, so yeah and I love the like the second so the second half is really the party and I love the like drama of the party and everything starts going down and it's also dramatic and it was really good and I really like that and I really love the four siblings um but the first half of the book was sort of following more the parents story which I didn't really like that much <laughs> um so but I, I guess it does sort of tie into how the like siblings came to be how they are but yeah I definitely 
we prefer the second half of the book. So then I averaged it out, 3.5 stars. Um, so yeah, so we're following these four Reaver siblings and they are the children of this famous singer called Mick Reaver, who is actually, I think, one of Evelyn Hugo's husbands. <laughs> um, but yeah, so um, Nina is the oldest and she is like this swimsuit model, I think. Um, and then Jay and Hood are like a very similar age. They're like twins, but one of them has a different mum um so they're not actual twins they were just born near the same time um, and then kit who's the youngest and i also love kit she's i need a, a kit spin-off honestly oh she was great uh, but nina is probably my favorite and i do feel like nina is kind of the main character especially towards the end like the events that happen um and she just has so much she's like sacrificed her childhood and her kind of um life almost for supporting others and I just I feel like she's a really good character um, and there was there was a few like quotes which just really stuck with me like there's this one about how the next generation of family you can choose like your like parents will give you all these boxes and you have to choose what you want to take forwards but also what you want to kind of retire and I think that's good and I do think actually having said about not liking the parent story I do think it made it so like it is almost a generational story and you see how the like generations change and and I, so I do think that was quite interesting um but yeah and also the one thing maybe that made me dislike it a little bit more was I'm not a huge fan of like rich people drama <laughs> and there is a lot of that in the book so I just feel like I didn't love that and I didn't love how much cheating there was I feel like Taylor Jenkins reads all books always have quite a bit of this but yeah I never really like cheating storylines and there was a little bit of that in the book so that I guess lessened my enjoyment but the characters I think were the main strong point for me and just the sense of like family I love like big sibling groups and their like dynamics and it, for some reason it reminded me of the Blackthorns from um, Shadowhunters I, I don't know why I think it's just like in LA and like the kind of children having to like raise themselves and anyway um but yeah, so I, I love the characters, but the like, some of the story I wasn't such a big fan of. Yeah, anyway. Witches of Ash and Ruin by E. Latimer. And this one I really enjoyed. I gave it 3.75 stars. Um, it's very, the vibes are really good. It's very like witchy. It's set in a small Irish town. And we're following Danya and she um, and her like coven. Um, what do they do? Oh yeah, so... Yeah, so she's like living with a coven, but she is part of this coven, but also she lives with her dad and her dad is like very religious. Um, so there's like a bit of conflict there. And then this new coven comes into town who are a bit mysterious. And, but then they sort of team up together because people keep dying. Well, there's like this new, this mystic, this like old slash new, old serial killer who's like come back it's called like the butcher or something um and he has started killing again so they're trying to investigate what's happening because they think there might be like a sort of magical uh reason or it's like witches being targeted type thing um so yeah it's kind of so them solving that almost but as the reader you know who the killer is because you get the POVs of that character and I liked and I liked the whole like um Celtic mythology the way the witches work like they pledge themselves to a god and then like get the like power of that god and I like the storyline with the gods like how that ties into the murders and stuff and, it, and I thought that was really good um yeah and I like the witchy vibes and there's a bit of a sapphic relationship as well which I liked and I feel I think I thought this was going to be a standalone but I think it's actually the start of a series which I think is interesting. Um, I feel like I could have been a little bit more attached to the characters. I think maybe that would have made me give it a high rating. But I did really enjoy like the story and the vibes and I just thought it was good. So yeah, I enjoyed this one. I'm trying to go a little bit quicker because I have my wrap ups always end up being like 50 minutes and I try so hard to make them shorter and then just waffle, waffle, waffle. Anyway. Um, so the last two books I read were A Little Hatred and The Trouble With Peace by Joe Crombie. 
So I don't think I'm going to talk about these for too long because I'm going to make a video dedicated just to these two. So just reviewing them. But basically I give them both five stars. I love them so much. The characters are just all my babies now. And I thought the plot was really good as well. And I feel like if you're like me and you're a bit unsure, because I didn't love First Law really. I, I liked I liked elements of it. I love Glockter. Um, but I just felt like the plot was just... <laughs> what plot? Um... And it's a very and I don't mind books that don't have plot actually, but I feel like sometimes I like there to be a direction, whereas the books just felt a bit directionless. And sometimes it would be like in first law, there would be like a story, but then it was just it was pointless, like it would just amount to nothing. I, I don't know how to explain it. But anyway, um and yeah, the character I'm I really, really like Glockter, like loved Glockter. The other characters I was always a bit meh towards. But these characters, I love them all. And I feel like Joe Bacomi really improves on his female characters. Like there's some amazing female characters in this book. Whereas in First Law there isn't really many. Um and just the plot was really good. The I just love the characters. Um so yeah, I would highly recommend them. Um if you read First Law and were kind of meh but I mean if you absolutely hated First Law you probably wouldn't like these because they are definitely still quite grim dark um but I just feel like they have like a humorous tone to them which is so good and oh yeah I just really liked it um so yeah I would highly recommend so yeah but I, I, if you want more my, more of my thoughts on them um I'll leave my video like review of them linked um just because this video is already quite long and I'm tired <laughs> and I want my lunch so um yeah I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did please give it a like and consider subscribing if you haven't already oh and let me know in the comments um what your favorite book that you read in June was mine was probably A Little Hatred um or The Trouble With Peace I don't know which one I like more but anyway um and yeah I hope you're all having a really good day and I'll see you next time